Hello there geographers and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we are going to be reviewing everything you need to know about diffusion. As always, if you find value in this video, consider subscribing and check out my other AP Human Geography resources in the description down below. Diffusion is the spread of a cultural element, item, group of people, or phenomenon from one place to another. To start, we have to look at the origin of a cultural element, group of people, or item, which is known as the heart. Over time, as people interact with other people, move to different areas, or participate in the global economy, we see diffusion occur. Diffusion can be broken down into two broad categories, relocation diffusion and expansion diffusion. Relocation diffusion happens when a culture or group of people physically moves from one place to another. This type of diffusion does not involve new individuals taking on the trait that is being spread. The number of people participating in this culture or believing in a certain idea stays the same. Since diffusion is happening due to migration, we will often see the hearth start to shrink and possibly die off. This is because the hearth becomes weakened as more people leave the hearth and relocate to the new place. An example of relocation diffusion would be the Amish, who originated in Europe but began to migrate to the United States around the 1700s to escape persecution. Originally settling around Pennsylvania, the Amish eventually started to migrate west in order to find cheaper land and avoid urban sprawl and the influence of modern culture. Now, expansion diffusion, on the other hand, does see the addition of more people practicing or taking on the cultural trait. Here, the hearth often remains strong as the cultural trait, group of people, or items expand outwards from the hearth. When trying to remember the difference between relocation and expansion diffusion, just think about the numbers. If we are seeing the same number of people practicing the culture as diffusion happens, it's most likely going to be relocation diffusion. But if we are seeing more people practicing the culture as diffusion happens, causing the amount of people to increase, it's most likely expansion diffusion. Now, expansion diffusion can be broken down into different types of diffusion. The first type of expansion diffusion is hierarchical diffusion. This type of diffusion often happens through systems, typically from some sort of power. Oftentimes, the trait will spread from a top-down approach. For example, fashion trends often start in global cities and diffuse to other major areas and eventually make its way down to the smaller settlements. Or we could also look at how news and ideas and products can diffuse through social media influencers. For example, games like Fortnite, Among Us, Fall Guys, Apex, or Warzone became popular after major social media influencers started playing them. When a major content creator started playing a game, their audience would see how much fun the game was and start to play it as well. Eventually, they would talk to their friends and get them to join in, and the game would spread through society. Now, sometimes we can see hierarchical diffusion go from a smaller community to a larger community instead. This is known as reverse hierarchical diffusion. An example of reverse hierarchical diffusion could be a small business starting off in a small town. Over time, as it grew, it expands throughout the region and eventually makes its way into a large urban city. Notice this is different than our fashion example, which started off in the large urban area and worked its way down. One other thing to remember too when talking about hierarchical diffusion is that the trait is only spreading to certain individuals in a society. The diffusion happens through a system of structures and does not spread to everyone at once. If the diffusion of the trait does not go through a system of structures and spreads quickly and everywhere, it is much more likely that it's an example of contagious diffusion, which is our next type of expansion diffusion. This type of diffusion has little to no barriers, which allow the trait to expand away from the hearth in all directions. When thinking about this diffusion, think about a viral video or meme. Before you know it, everyone has seen it or is talking about it. If you need help remembering contagious diffusion, just think about someone making a cup of coffee, peeling an orange, or lighting a strong smelling candle. At first, only the people near the hearth of the smell can smell the coffee, candle, or orange. But before you know it, the smell will have diffused through the entire room and everyone will be able to smell it. The last type of expansion diffusion is stimulus diffusion, and this one is a little bit different. Here, the trait is changing as it diffuses. Now, it's important to note that the underlying concept of the trait is staying the same. What happens is as diffusion occurs, we see the trait take on different aspects of the environment or culture it is diffusing to. For example, if you look at McDonald's around the world, you will notice that the menu changes for almost every country. Each store often also has its own unique store layout and exterior to better fit in with the surrounding place. The concept of the McDonald's is the same, but different elements of it have changed in order to account for the different people and cultures where the store is located. So we can see that as diffusion occurs, McDonald's adapts and changes some of its traits. But 
it still is McDonald's at the end of the day. As you can see, diffusion can occur in a variety of different ways. But what would stop something from diffusing? Well, diffusion could be prevented due to cultural barriers. For example, if there's a language barrier between two places, it will be more difficult to spread an idea between the two places. Or if the religion or culture rejects certain traits or does not approve of certain traits, there may be more restrictions to those traits, causing them to diffuse slower. For example, the access to contraceptives may be restricted in a community that is more religious and does not approve of them. We can also see political barriers, geographic barriers, or even economic barriers restrict diffusion, such as migration, which would reduce individuals from different places interacting with one another. One thing to note that due to technological advancements, physical barriers are becoming less and less of an obstacle for diffusion. Thanks to the internet, cheaper cell phones, and computers, it's easier than ever to connect with people around the world. In fact, today, the biggest obstacles to diffusion are often now political, economic, and cultural barriers. So that's diffusion. Now comes the time to practice what we've learned. Answer the questions on the screen, and when you're done, you can check your answers in the description of this video or in the comment section down below. As always, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you found value in the video, and check out my ultimate review packet for more help with your studies. The packet covers everything you need to know for AP Human Geography, and it's a great resource that can help you get an A in your class and a five on that national exam. As always, I'm Mr. Sin. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time online.